Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Season 1. Meet Percy Jackson, Percy being short for Perseus, the hero from Greek mythology, and Percy has had a difficult childhood thinking he's crazy because he can see mythological creatures that no one else can. Today, his visions are worse than ever when his math teacher turns into a monster and attacks him, but his other teacher had just lent him a pen, which turns into a sword, and he slays that monster. Naturally, though, no one else saw a thing. So maybe Percy's finally had a full mental break, but he has a mother that's loving and supportive. She's like, well, Percy, guess it's time to finally tell you, Greek mythology is real and your father was a god. Yes, that's right. You're a wizard, Harry. Well, not a wizard, a demigod. Percy's best friend Grover comes over, and now that Percy's eyes are open, he notices Grover has goat legs. Yes, he's a satyr that was specifically assigned to protect Percy. Yes, demigods or half-bloods live a life of constant danger. They're magnets for monsters, like the Minotaur that's coming after him right now. Percy's mom says goodbye. She's staying behind to distract it while the boys get to safety, and so Percy watches as his mother is killed. Percy fires up his pen sword and goes to fight the Minotaur. Yeah, He's way outclassed, but basically gets lucky and somehow manages to defeat this thing. And so Percy makes it to Camp Half-Blood, a safe place where demigods can learn to use their powers. The camp director is Dionysus, yeah, the god of wine. He's here as a punishment, forced to hang around a bunch of kids while being totally sober. But really running the camp is Percy's nice teacher, who's actually a centaur. It's Chiron, legendary trainer of heroes. So the campers are divided by which god is their parent, but Percy's father is still a mystery he won't know till his dad claims him. Percy befriends an older kid, Luke, who gives him the lowdown. The campers compete for glory to win their parents' approval. The most glory comes from Capture the Flag, a full-on ancient Greek war game. Percy's team captain is Annabeth, the camp's best fighter, and she's got a special mission for the new kid. She puts on her invisibility cap and vanishes, and now the other team captain's coming after Percy, because as the kid who killed the Minotaur, he's now a big target. But he was just bait to lure her away while the rest of the team captured the flag and they win. During the fight, Percy was not doing great, but once he got close to water, he got a lot better. And now in the lake, his father claims him, it's Poseidon, god of the sea. But Poseidon doesn't have any other kids here, turns out Percy is a forbidden child. The big three, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, made a pact that their kids were too strong they wouldn't have anymore. In fact, Zeus and Poseidon are going to war because someone stole Zeus's master bolt. And as a newly revealed forbidden child, Zeus thinks it was Percy working for his dad. Of course, Percy didn't steal the master bolt, but to prove his innocence, he's going to have to get it back from the real supposed culprit, the other brother, Hades. And Percy has another reason to visit the underworld. Turns out his mom is not really dead. The way she disappeared into sparkling light means Hades in fact kidnapped her. So Percy Jackson sets off on his quest with his best friend Grover and his new friend Annabeth. Though he and Annabeth aren't friends at first, they butt heads and Grover tries to sing the friendship song to keep them all working together. But Percy's worried because the Oracle prophesied that one of his friends would betray him. Now at first their grand adventure is pretty mundane. They're just taking a bus to Los Angeles. But almost immediately some monsters show up, so yeah they are in mortal peril. They come to a rest stop with a ton of statues. Yeah you know who lives here, it's Medusa. But she's not a monster, she's just a person who the gods cursed for petty reasons. And yeah, if you remember your Greek mythology, the Olympian gods are kind of awful. But it's soon apparent they don't see eye to eye, so Medusa turns on him. But Annabeth puts the invisibility cap on her so Percy can open his eyes and cut her head off. But Medusa had a valid point. The gods were very unfair to her, and so he's gonna ship them her head, which is wildly impertinent, but Percy's kind of an impertinent guy. Next, our crew hop a train where they meet Echidna, mother of monsters, who sicks a chimera on them. So they're on the run in St. Louis. Luckily, Annabeth's mother has a safe house here. Yes, the St. Louis Arch is a temple of Athena. And Athena could keep the monsters out, but she's mad about the whole Medusa head thing and is letting them in as punishment. So Percy Jackson's gonna sacrifice himself, let his friends get away while he holds off the chimera. And the chimera absolutely wrecks him. Percy Jackson falls to his death. But luckily, there's water nearby, and his dad Poseidon steps in to save him. But right now, these kids are wanted criminals, so public transportation is not an option. Luckily, they're picked up by a motorcycle guy, none other than Ares, god of war. And Ares thinks their quest is dumb. Zeus and Poseidon are going to go to war no matter what, because that's just what gods do. But he'll help them if they retrieve his shield, which is held at Hephaestus' abandoned amusement park. But to get the shield, someone has to sit on the cursed throne, and once again, Percy sacrifices himself and takes one for the team. By now, these 
these two have become real close, and so Annabeth's trying to release her friend. At first, Hephaestus doesn't want to let him go, but she's like, hey, why are you gods so mean? Like, can't we all just be better people? And this resonates with Hephaestus, who the other gods treat poorly, and so he lets Percy Jackson go. So Ares holds up his end of the bargain and gets them a ride to Los Angeles. Well, not all the way to Los Angeles, just to Vegas, where then they can ask a ride from Hermes. Hermes hangs out at the Lotus Casino, which like the tale from the Odyssey, if you're not careful, you can forget what you were doing here. So they track down Hermes, who at first is not going to help him. Hermes is Luke's father, but Luke hates him because he blames him for his mom's death. Hermes feels real bad about that, but sometimes us gods are powerless too. In the end, he still won't help, so Annabeth steals his car keys. Meanwhile, Grover found another satyr who forgot what he was doing here. Earlier, we learned about Grover's side quest to find Pan, the god of nature that disappeared. Now, this guy remembers he was looking for Pan, and he almost found him here, but turns out it was just a search for Pan video game. So Hermes' magic taxi cab will teleport them to Los Angeles, if they can drive it out of the garage. Eventually, they do, and turns out the back door to the underworld is in an old waterbed store. Percy and friends try to talk their way in, but the living are not allowed to be here, and the entrance is guarded by Cerberus, the giant three-headed dog. But turns out he's just a sweet little puppers, and they distract him by playing fetch. They gotta pass through the Forest of Regret, where if you have regrets, the tree roots grab ya. And pretty soon, Annabeth is grabbed by the roots. What does she regret? Well, there's a lot of her backstory we don't fully know. But her previous best friend was a forbidden child of Zeus, who got turned into a tree. So Percy and Grover have to leave her behind while she gets out with her teleport bead. But now Grover's flying sneakers go nuts. They're trying to pull him into the pit of Tartarus. They managed to get those shoes off him, but that was weird. And now something even weirder happens. In his backpack, Percy finds the Master Bolt. This was the backpack Ares gave him, so they realize Ares stole the Master Bolt and now tricked Percy into delivering it to Hades. But they still have to rescue Percy's mom, so they go to visit the Lord of the Underworld himself, Hades. Who? turns out is kind of a nice guy. He's like, whoa, I didn't kidnap your mom. I rescued her from the Minotaur, so now we can make a trade. But Percy's like, no way, man. I'm not giving you the Master Bolt. But turns out Hades doesn't want the Master Bolt. Hades has no interest in taking over Olympus. He's actually very happy here in the underworld. He just wants his Helmet of Darkness back, which he thinks Percy stole and then used to steal the Master Bolt. So Percy realizes the real big bad is father of the gods, Kronos. They overthrew him and banished him to Tartarus, where he's spent eternity plotting his revenge. So first things first, Percy makes the deal. I'll get your helmet in exchange for my mom. So Percy has to get the helmet back from Ares, who is apparently working with Kronos. So Percy challenges him to single combat, which of course he would definitely lose. But he sets the rule, if I draw first blood, you give me the helm back and let us live. Yeah, that's the god's big weakness. They have to follow certain rules. That's why they have mortal children who are able to break the rules for them. But these kids can use that to their advantage. And so it's the Percy and Ares duel. Once again, Percy is going to lose. But luckily, Percy always fights near the water, and now he summons a huge tidal wave, which knocks Ares down long enough for Percy to draw first blood. Ares is very mad, but he has no choice. He gives them the helm, and they give it to Hades in exchange for Percy's mom. But first, they have a bigger problem. The war between Zeus and Poseidon might destroy the entire world. So Percy goes to return the bolt at the top of the Empire State Building in the secret elevator to Olympus. And Percy Jackson returns the Master Bolt to Zeus. He explains this was all the master plan of Kronos to trick them into war and weaken them both. But Zeus doesn't really care. He's like, oh, I'm going to war Poseidon anyway, just for fun. And so Percy Jackson tells this guy off, which is once again very impertinent. And so Zeus is going to smite him. But wait, what's this? Percy is saved by his father, Poseidon. And he is willing to put his ego aside and surrenders this war before it begins. And that's apparently good enough for Zeus. Now he can go deal with Kronos. Now finally, Percy gets to meet his father, who turns turns out is a really good guy, and he comes to understand his father really does love him, but couldn't be in his life because of godly reasons. And so Percy completed his quest, and the day is saved. Except it had to be a half-blood who actually stole the bolt. They assume it was Ares' daughter, Clarice. But Percy remembers the prophecy. None of his friends ended up betraying him. Turns out it was Luke who gave Percy the sneakers that tried to deliver the bolt to Kronos. Luke explains, I'm not a bad guy. The gods are bad, so we have to help Kronos overthrow him. But Percy's like, hey, the gods are doing their best. Plus, Kronos is very obviously worse. And so Luke and Percy have a sword fight where once again, Percy is going to lose. But Percy's saved by Annabeth, who heard the whole thing and is real mad at Luke, who she considers a brother. But Luke escapes with his portal making sword. And that's a problem for season two. And so as summer camp comes to an end, Percy and Annabeth are going back to their normal lives while Grover is officially beginning his search for Pan. And when Percy gets home, his mother's alive. Yes, Hades kept his word 
and mother and son reunited. And that's where season one comes to an end. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.